All right, now we're learning the sikh of the Rebbe that the Rebbe made in 1966, and we talked about it before. We began it yesterday, that why is it that the holiday of Purim is the only holiday in Judaism that doesn't have a Jewish name? All the others have Jewish names, and Purim, it says clearly in the Megillah, that it is a Persian name, and Pur means lots. <clears throat> Not only that, it has a negative name. The Pur is the lots were an instrument used by Haman to destroy all the Jews. He wanted to understand what was the best time, according to astrology, whatever, to uh, take out his terrible decree. <clears throat> and, 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 and it came out, the poor came out that it was going to be in the month of Udder. He was very happy because the month of Udder is the month when Moses died. He was very happy. Pretty bad. Not only that, says the Rebbe, we got a couple more questions. The, the holiday of Purim, it, 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 we read the Megillah. The Megillah doesn't have the name of God. Right? Doesn't have, and Esther also, Esther's name indicates also concealment. Hastir, concealment. It says, but on the other hand, we do read the Megillah, and the word Megillah is from the word Giloi, revelation. So that's a little bit, um, a little bit sort of positive. And so we can see what's going on over here. So the Rebbe says, okay, let's look at the story of what happened in, in Purim. Essentially, what it was, was that Haman convinced Ahasuerus, who was the king of the whole world, to kill all the Jews. Haman had total power. He had total power. And Haman convinced him not just to kill the Jews, but to hate the Jews. Haman said, I'll give you a lot of money. I'll give you 10,000 bars of silver if you um, they kill the Jews. And the king said, just kill the Jews. I, I don't need them anyway. Take the money. I don't need the money. <clears throat> okay, so what happened af after that? The Jews had political power. Mordecai saved the king's life. <laughs> Esther was the queen. She was the king's wife. They could have used their influence. And not only that, they didn't do anything wrong. They did nothing whatsoever wrong. They could have just come to the king and said, your majesty, you know, wh what's this decree for? We never did anything wrong to you. Yeah, what's the reason you're killing us? They tell us maybe there's some reason we can stop doing it. You know, maybe something. No, nothing whatsoever. They didn't do that. What did they do? They fasted for three days. And Esther also fasted for three days. And she had not been invited to the king. And anyone who went into the king uninvited was killed immediately. Unless the king, some or other, had a, a good mood. And he stuck out his scepter. To We talked about this before. And Esther, nevertheless, she fasted for three days and she wanted to see the king, which was an insane thing to do because her whole connection to the king was the king liked the way she looked. The king was a, a, a what do we call it, a profligate, whatever it is. He was a debauched person and he, he tried all the other ladies in the whole kingdom. And Esther, he liked, she was the best one. She liked, he liked the way she looked. And now she's fasting for three days. For sure, that's not any sort of a, of a method to win a beauty contest. And surely she wouldn't look the same way as she, that appealed to him in the beginning when she took him. Nevertheless, she fasted for three days. And everybody fasted. Why did they do this? So the Rebbe said, this is what we're getting up to yesterday. The Rebbe said, because they suddenly realized, Mordechai and Esther, they realized that the whole reason that this terrible decree came to destroy all the Jews in one day, there was no time to run away. There was no place to run away. And he was demanding them that they that they uh, be killed because they're Jews, suddenly they realized that this whole thing was spiritual. It had nothing to do with anything logical or, or political or uh, 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 the, what do you say, the social, sociological things or something psychological, right? All of a sudden the king had a, an attack of whatever it is, of hatred. They realized the whole thing was orchestrated by God. <clears throat> They realized that they had that they could not do away with the decree unless they get did away with the reason for this terrible decree. And not only did they say that the Jewish people should fast, why did they choose to do fasting three days? Why? Also, they said clearly what the reason for the thing was. What what sin exactly did they do? A state of Midrash that says on the Pasuk with Sum don't eat and don't drink. It says, You now, it says in the Midrash, 
<clears throat> that the decree that Esther made, don't eat and don't drink, says you have to not eat and drink 33 days. This makes up for the fact that you did eat and drink at the meal of Achashverosh. And like, as we said before, the meal of Achashverosh was to celebrate the fact that his rulership over the world was now cemented 100%. Because his big worry was that he knew the prophecy of Jeremiah, that the Jewish people would be in exile for 70 years. And he was counting <clears throat> anxiously to see if these what would happen at the end of the 70 years. And he saw that 70 years had passed and nothing happened. The, the temple was not built. He was one of the reasons this, that the temple stopped being built. Achashverosh. Never let it stop. The fact is, though, he, he miscalculated. He miscalculated. But he didn't know that. And the Jewish people also didn't know that. And they believed that really, maybe the prophecy of Jeremiah, God forbid, was not true. And that that's it. God had really abandoned the Jewish people. And there wasn't going to be a second temple. That's it. And so they all participated in this meal of Achashverosh. And they said, wow, this is, and listen, maybe it's not so bad. We're going to be friends with Achashverosh. He's inviting us to the meal. And that's okay. That's, that's pretty good. right? It, it, maybe it's even better than a consolation prize. I mean, I don't know if we would get such, such closeness to the king if we would, we would have a second temple. right? Maybe, maybe not. So they all participated in this, this meal. This, how do you say, go away party of the, the, the second temple was not going to come. So they had, <clears throat> what do you call it? That I think like the Irish people, they make what they call a wake. <laughs> a wake. After a person dies, they all go back and they make a big party and they all get drunk, right? Because the person is dead. He's not going to come back. The same thing, they made a big party. The temple is dead. Judaism is dead. We're making a big party awake, right? We're celebrating. At least we can be happy, right? Don't worry. Says, you got pleasure from that meal? says, therefore, that's why the decree came, to destroy all of you. You want to get rid of the decree? Fast and don't eat. Make up for the food you ate. When the Akre and after, by, through the chuva that they did, <clears> hot <throat> men or rupkinum, they took away the reason for the decree. Under Eberster and God, Vildach and them, Bekal Asher God wants you to do a little something. Is men zoltan epis. You have to do a little bit. <clears throat> in dark in nature, when men demelt and then genumen achashverosh upke upke shrein the gezera, then up to shrein the gezera, then achashverosh he rescinded this terrible decree. In other words, by means of <clears throat> logic, po politics, by using their connections. Maybe it might have worked. Maybe, right? Maybe it would have worked. But they would have had to have tremendous efforts and tremendous, and still the decree would be somewhere hanging over their head because they ate from the meal of Achashverosh. By means of doing a little bit, they just fasted. They had, they had no connection to Achashverosh, to politics, to anything logical whatsoever. But they did a little something. And this little something that they did, they did it with connection to God. So God did the rest. All of a sudden, a big miracle. And while there again, so Achashver is going to Achashver is given nitmer is only a garment, because in order that the save the salvation from above should have some connection to nature of a deceiver. But the real reason that the Jewish people were saved is tshuva tainis. The real reason is not that Achashver changed his mind, and not because the real reason is that the Jewish people they changed their mind that they decided to do tshuva, to return to God, is showing far, <clears throat> far standing. Now we can understand is that the main thing, the main attention, the Iker Acht, Hat Men Geleik, they put the main attention not on the garment, but on the reason. What can we learn from this? The Torah, the the teaching from this is, is moving, it's understood clearly. The ace in the time when it comes, the time of difficulty. Zainer Faran, a Zainer, there are some people which say that what the first thing we have to do, the beginning service is uh, politics, doing things in a normal way. Dartsalin, Uns, be similar to the non Jews. They're our enemies. We have to be similar to them. 
right? They're, they're, they're singling us out because we look different, because we act different, because we talk different. We so let's look just like them. Let's think just like them. Let's act them. And then the Jew, the, going, the non-Jews will love us. Megillah tells us, as does, that this... <clears throat> This is oh. no, I know what I gotta do in the future. Okay. This is a speckled de Kazakh. This is later. You want to do things in a logical way? It's not bad to be logical. And the Ersh of Pula, but the first thing you have to do is starken them for born, strengthening your connection with the creator, with God. Durch learning by learning the Torah of God and doing the commandments of God. When Ersh done, and only then, Zuchen for them, Hatzalah, then you can <clears throat> look for some sort of a garment and to do it. In the end, uh, Esther did go into the king. She didn't just sit at home and pray. She went into the king. She risked her life. Why? Because she should just sat at home and prayed and fasted and let God do the whole thing. No, oh, God doesn't want to do the whole thing. He wants us to do, be his partner. He wants us to do the utmost, but he has to be in connection to him. When oy mivet, azoitan, and if we do so, is velcha levush, no matter what garment we do, then vet zich in im antan de hatzala nisis, which is above nature. When punkt vi, and just, I, I read somewhere that there's a lot of, if you read in the Tanakh, like the stories of Gidon, Gideon and this, and Samson and all this, it says that the, the, the Jews were always tremendously outnumbered in battle. And all of a sudden they came up with these really weird genius ideas to save them. It says why? Because they didn't plan. They didn't plan. They did what they had to do. They did the minimum. But with this, what they did, right, is nothing. Look at the, the army of the Jews now. Look, we're outnumbered 10 to 1, 100 to 1. I, well, in the Six Day War, we're outnumbered. Who knows how many? All the our enemies had the most modern Russian weaponry and armies. They were, they were motivated and everything like that. And all of a sudden, boom, we killed them all. Why? And it was obvious. The whole new world knew that it was God. The Israeli government said, "What are you talking about? It was us. It was our planes. It was our that. Uh, the whole thing was an amazing miracle. You can't deny it. Yes, you can. And that they did. Said the Rebbe, "Let's stop denying it." The fact is we have to do something. Yes, we have to have an army, you have to have this, but we have to know that the one that's really bringing the results is God. And poof, he thus is Benogel Klal Yisrael, just as this is revealed, relevant to all of the Jewish people like it was back then, all of Judaism. <clears throat> as a Zazoi, it's also the Gabi Yedr, also every individual Jew. In your own personal Life and your own personal struggles, your own personal challenges. A yiddar face and a Jew has to know, as er is forbunden mit neighbors to that he's connected to God. Voser is nit ba ba grenst that and God is not limited. Chas v'shalom. God forbid. In chukiyat tavat nature. As darv taka oich zayin, there also has to be b'kol asher tase. You have to do your part. In nature, in vos es zol zich antan, in order to have a vessel for the blessing of God. Abraham but because as their taase, the deeds, what you're doing to make a vessel, vos the mensh tut is nit more via lavush, it's just a garment, is the reaper. So therefore, it's understood simply as their eager, the main thing is tablus, the main effort that you should put. So I knit in the lavush, not in the garment, <clears throat> nor but in the bakuman, the bracha from Eberster. The main thing is the blessing from God. Was thus too, man, which this is done by means of the garments, a proper Jewish garments, learning Torah and doing the commandments. Aber but oib men for baked. If you transform, you what do you say? You you switch. Their Iker, the main thing, Sulib Starkin, Lavush. If you, I say, <clears throat> uh, abandon, 
the main thing, namely guard, godliness, and you want to make the garment stronger, is, does, and look, this is like, you go into the bank, a Royce Newman Gelt to take out money, then Erhat Nitka and check. You don't have a check. Mitvas them guilt to Bakuman in order to take out that with no check for the money. Other them check is from Azoi, but the check is one was hot nitkain rechtung un back. Or you don't have any covering in the bank. Right? It's like writing a big check. Maybe let's take the second example better. You go into the bank and you write a check for $20 million. And you go in the check, you give it, like there's the joke that a person goes and walking in the street, a rabbi's walking in the street, he sees one of his congregants, he's all depressed. All of us, oh, well, how are you, Mr. Grice? What are you so depressed about? He says, because of one word, because of one word, I just lost $5 million. I said, really? What happened? One word? What happened? He said, I went into a bank that I, I that I, I knew a bank I'd never been in before. I went to the teller and I showed him my ID and I said, give me $5 million. And the teller said, no. One word, I lost $5 million. He didn't have any money in the bank. <laughs> what do you mean one word made him lose? Them? It wasn't the one word that made him lose, right? It was the fact he didn't have anything in. The same thing, he writes a big check, $5 million, but he doesn't have any money in the bank. The same thing over here. If Mordechai and Esther, they would have done all these political things and made all sorts of connections and made protests in the streets. If there wasn't God with them, God is the one who does the miracles. If God wasn't with them, so it's like having a big check. Everything is a, a big a flashy sign, but there's no covering. There's no cover for the check. The Erster Zach, the first thing a Jew has to do is <clears throat> barvern and mit the check. You have to do with it, make pay attention to the check. You have to have covering for the check. When us then the check, the check sign nit from boros nishboros, it won't be like empty, uh, the empty cisterns. I share lo yochlomai that have no water in them. Nor la havdil from them what it says liya kesev liyazav, money, silver and gold belong to me. Ma'achre after a person has the check or the cover for the check, as zoktim the abister God says as. Oh, baiting, go in, cash it. But Lavusha Teva, make some sort of a garment in nature, go to the bank <clears throat> and get the money. Kenman meaning a person could think. So here we have the same thing. What did Esther do? She fasted, she did this. She did a little thing. She went into the king. But she knew that the whole miracle was going to come. So according to nature, the king should have said, what, who's this ugly lady coming in? I married you? What a mistake I made. But he should have said, get her out of here. I never want to see her again. She was taking a big chance. So she wasn't taking a chance at all. The fact is that she knew that the whole thing came from God. If she would give herself totally over to the creator, then the creator would do whatever he wants. What's his will? And his will is the Jewish people should be saved. Ah, a person can think. So then you had, therefore, the main thing is the godliness. A person can think, as calling out all this we said before, is only back then. In a time when there's shining godliness in a revealed way, right? They were going to build the holy temple, etc. But in the time of exile, especially now, in the end, this is the heels of the Mashiach. When there's a doubled and redoubled darkness, is Vibal because as the Abish that God alone, God himself is making the darkness, is as a Hester Amiti. So it's a true darkness. Right? That was the Israeli government said back then. It wasn't God that won the Six Day War. It was our planes. They got a good point, right? Because we don't see any big open miracles. God doesn't come down fire on a mountain or something like that, like he did on Mount Sinai. He doesn't do. So therefore, they said, well, listen, we did go in with our planes. Our planes did shoot missiles. Every missile hit. So it happened, right? Uh -huh. Therefore, you might think that now that we're in the time of exile, when God is totally concealed, as the hashpam yilamayla from <clears throat> in physical things is ibra given. Now it's given that God wants to nature, right? God says now we're in exile. Everything has to be natural. Or if them come to unfer, then this comes the answer that no, even in the time of Purim, the time of Purim was tremendous darkness. Zayin and Eden gaven, and they were in a tremendous darkness. All the Jews had given up totally. They'd given up totally. Achashverosh was ruling the whole world. Haman was his number one man. 
an anti-Semite. Wow, the Jews should have said, there's darkness like this. That they, they were just 70 years before the first temple had been destroyed. There was good reason to think that God had left the Jews. And the Jews were scattered around the whole world. When their matzav is given, and the situation was, in the time back then, the situation was, oh, also, after the miracle, One second, one second. What did that? What does this mean? One minute, one minute. I lost something over here. <clears throat> one second. And their situation was is given. Oh, what did I do here? Oh. <clears throat> oh, and now we're in a situation. No, right. <clears throat> now our situation is even after the miracle of Purim. It says, like the Gemara says, Akate, even now, Avde Akashveroshanan. We are the servants of Ahasuerus. Remember, we learned that sikh about that, why we don't say uh, Hallel. When we just finished now. Un <clears throat> Apopiki, nevertheless, is Oich Demel. Back then, Gekom and Dahatzala. Right? Back then, it was just like now. We're servants of Ahasuerus. <clears throat> nevertheless, back then, in the time of Purim, there came, um, the salvation of the Jews came not in a natural way, but by means of tzumolai, fasting for three days. This is also, this is the teaching from what it says, what the Yom Tov, the Yom Tov is called by the name of Purim, in a Persian word, unvas veist oif, which indicates the decree, Purim. There's lots that hum and through. Un oif, therefore, and why it is that in the whole Megillah is not mentioned the name of God. Well, in them, in this, Beshtayit is <clears throat> hinted at, their oif to the whole purpose, the whole message of Purim and the Megillah Sester. As does, was hidden that the fact that Jews are not untigavarfan, they are not under the, the laws of nature, is as nit blows, is not only regarding spiritual things, right? When I can put on tefillin, I can do commandments, then I'm above nature. Namely, spiritual things, succeeding in learning Torah. Right, there was one rabbi that said, "What do I care if if the the the, the Arabs conquer Israel? I'll learn Torah in jail. They'll put us in jail." Oh, idiot. Was darv the haben sight of the Shema? You have to have help of heaven. Was kum dorach yirushemayim? This is through the fear of God. Other afilu in masav matan, not just in spiritual things, but also in physical things. Your business. <clears throat> how you are in working with other Jews or other people. is is <clears throat> says the Jewish people, when they're with Jews, then, you know, it, it's a little bit easier. Then you can do all sorts of things. He pil poor. Then er shteit and azoy matzav was da achashash an anstat der manen shem shamayim vet their goy, their men in Lahavdil, Shem of When you deal, you're in the world, and you're dealing with non Jews, then all of a sudden you see that we're outnumbered a million to one, even when we're in a situation when God's name is not mentioned, like the Megillah. And the whole thing seems to be ruled by non Jews. It's a non Jewish name. Can a Dachman, a person, think, the Balt is the goy because the non Jews is Ya. Unter Gavarfan, a joy, a Nanju, is ruled by the laws of nature. And the, the, what Jews get comes through their Hashpa from the Nanjus. Where do we get our money from? 
the non-Jews. Who's the president of the United States? A non-Jew. Who's the president of the United Nations? A non-Jew, right? We have to, therefore, the non-Jews have us outnumbered 500 to one, and they also rule the whole entire world. So you might think that, you know, I'm doing business with non-Jews, so bemele oich dem yid, so therefore, I'm also under the laws of nature. Oich dem is a that's a teaching from Purim. Megillah Esther, that even in a time when a Jew is dealing with Purim, Persian, and Esther, concealment, has to rest, you don't see God anyway, anywhere. Dar for you have to know, as in them, that in this is something above nature. They're poor. That's the goral, the lot that humming through to be above above nature, above normal, pure luck, as this can also fall for the Jews also. The goral, which is a thing which is above nature, when in them has to rest there, and this is concealed, and God can be concealed, the anuchi can be concealed, but this is hecher from all the afilu b'shemavai, it's higher than even the name of God, this can be concealed, but on the other hand, if the Jew gives himself over to God, ignores all of the darkness, like they did back then. One minute. This takes time for everything. I hope. Huh? Let's try it again. Oh. I think I'm able to, but... No, I did. Okay. So even in a time when a Jew is reading Megillus Esther, <clears throat> so he's saying even in a time, that's why it's in Persian, to show that even in the Jews are in a situation where the whole world is Persian, it's ruled by the non-Jews. And it's there's no name of God. You don't see the name of God at all. No name of God. <clears throat> and when people call out to God, they call out to a name of an idolatry. And it's concealed, Esther is concealed. <clears throat> but you have to know that even then, that's when the miracle of Purim happened. When a, when a time that a Jew reads the Megillus Esther, that also the thing of Aster, of concealment, the things of concealment, even a double concealment, Haster, Aster, so concealed that you think everything is revealed. You don't think that that's, that's the way things are supposed to be. Nevertheless, we read Megillah. Megillah means to be revealed. Val er veis, because a Jew should know, as oich dem pur, because these lats that hum and throw through to be above nature, to get, so to speak, God on his side, biz sum pur, from Haman, is hua garal. This is really the lot, it's a Hebrew word. On dust alts is nitlam afreya, and you should know, it says, like the Baal Shem Tov said, if you read the Megillah backwards, it's no good. Don't think that this is just a miracle story. One time happened really, really nice, like a fairy tale or something like that. No, it's happening right now. No, it says, by him, it's, it's by us right now. Thus, done, then, when a person realizes that the miracles of Purim caused by God and the devotion that the Jewish people had to the creator of nature are the main thing, Done, then, kumtsum, taklis, then you can come to the ultimate purpose of this whole thing, megillah, not just to, megillah stam, everything becomes revealed, was bring to a simcha, a tremendous joy, biz, in an orphan, until away from adalo yada, that you don't know, a, a new goodness that you had no idea things could be so good, a simcha bilti mugbelas, a joy which is <clears throat> unlimited. Nowadays, usually when something good happens, as you want, <clears throat> you pray for things to be good, mostly is to get rid of bad stuff. Right? There shouldn't be any more sickness, there shouldn't be any more wars, there shouldn't be any more famine, there shouldn't be any more poverty. Right? Maybe I should have a little more money, a little more happiness, my daughter should get married, my this, thing. you know, there was things that already happened. Happened. When the Jews left Egypt, for instance, they'd never been free before. It was a brand new thing. They didn't know how to, what to do with it. Uh, free from Egypt, they had been 
they and their parents and their grandparents, the great grandparents, four generations were slaves. They didn't know there was anything different. They got out, it was a totally new thing, a totally new happiness, especially when they crossed over the sea, then they were really fi finished with the enemies. Then they sang the song of happiness that this is God. Wow, wow, wow. Well, the, the, re the re revelations that are going to be in the future are going to be so new that it's going to make the novelty that was back then like so expected, unexpected. The revelation is going to be such a surprise, something we've never had before the whole world. It will be a tremendous, this is happiness with no limitation. And them, by means of this, is Somchim Gula the Gula. We'll make the redemption next to the redemption. We say the reason that we, if there's two others, so we make the holiday of Purim in the second udder, because it's next to the month of Nisan, where there was the miracle of, of Passover, going out of Egypt. So it says we want to make the miracle of Purim next to the miracle of Pesach, as from them Geula, the from, but we're going to say in a different way, that from the redemption of Purim, we can come to not the redemption of Pesach, but the future redemption, versus Bedugma, which is something like, but infinitely more than the redemption of going out of Egypt was done, which then, when there is the future redemption with the Mashiach, and that's the Rebbe, he just has to reveal himself and make all this stuff happen. It says, Layla Yom Yair, says the night will shine like the day, as Oich done, that even then, Choshech from the light, that the darkness of the night will light up the whole world. Like we said, Megillah Esther, that even then, that concealment itself will be revelation. That's something what we said before. Even the evil people in the world will turn to God. We pray this three times a day in the Aleinu. If no elecha kol rish e'oretz. All the evil people will turn to God. When will this be? Babias Mashiach Tzikeinu. Yavo, he will come. Yigaleinu and redeem us. A korov mamash. Wonderful. Okay, there will not be a class today at 3 o'clock. No class at 3 o'clock. There will not be a class tomorrow at all. Thursday. But God willing, I will try to make a class on Friday morning, 8.15 to 9. Now let's learn the, the uh, yom yom. Yom yom. Okay, let's learn today. Amalek. Amalek came forth and he fought with the Jewish people at Rafidim. That's what it says. He fought with the Jewish people at Rafidim. This is what we're going to read. <clears throat> tomorrow in the morning when we before we read the Megillah he fought with the Jews at a place called Rifidim this means weakness the Jews were weak because they neglected learning the Torah when Jews become weak in learning the Torah and Torah study is uh, when people become weak in learning the Torah and because of that, it means that they become weak in doing the commandments. Then comes along a mullock, and it cools off the Jews' excitement and, uh, I say, enthusiasm about God. Amalek fought with Israel. The word Israel is <clears throat> Yisrael is Yesh Shishim Riboy Oteot Latora. Yesh, Rosh Tevas. Yesh, there are Shishim, six T, Rebo, 10,000, 600,000 letters in the Torah. Every Jew has a letter in the Torah. And this is the reason for the universal Jewish commandment that each person should write a letter or buy a letter in the Torah. A Amalek cools off the holiness of the Torah. What's the antidote to this? Is you have to be connected to Moshe. Bachar Lanu Anoshi. That's what Joshua said. He said, let us, Moses commanded Yeshua, pick people that are connected to me, to Moshe. And every generation, there has to be a Moshe. Our generation, of course, is the Lubavitcher Rebbe. And then you can, only when you're connected to Moses, can you, be, can you fight Amalek. Each person, Bo Lachem, it means you, singular. The Torah is eternal. And it's relevant in every generation. And so is a mullock. And the only way we can destroy him is be connected to the Rebbe. That's today's Yom Yom. Let's do tomorrow.
Purim. In reading the Megillah, we say, La rog ula abed, vi la rog ula abed. And it's just something that the, when you read the Megillah, you should see. Which ish lo amed bifnehem, ish moed lifnehem. We also say that. We, say, we repeat the sentence twice. When you say, Ayyirat hazot, Purim, you shake the Megillah. In Shushan and Yaakov, we say the Shechianu. Um, when Shechianu is said in the daytime uh, reading of the Megillah also. This is part of the Shushan and Yaakov. We say after reading the Megillah, we say. And the, the Megillah we read in the daytime, we also say Shechianu, even though we said in the nighttime. In the daytime, it's said mainly on the commandments of the day to have the meal and to give the the uh, gifts to the poor, etc. This is what Friday. Friday. We'll learn this on Friday, but why not? Let's do it. My grandfather said that the second, because there's some people that have Purim on Friday. That's in in Jerusalem. The <clears throat> the the second Rebbe of Chabad wrote a special memoriam and a special book. For every type of a chassid, etc. There's one called Shar, y- Shar Yichud and Shari Ora. They are general written for everybody. Shari Yichud is the key of teachings of Hasidut, and Shari Ora is the Aleph Beit of Hasidut. Two different books of Hasidut written by the second Rebbe of Chabad. Okay, have a good day with Mashiach now. Have a happy Purim, everyone. Happy Purim. There will not be a class this afternoon. There will not be a class, any classes tomorrow, but God willing, on Friday there will be. We should now dance with Mashiach, now this Purim. Yechiyad Arneinu, Moreno Rabbeinu, Melech HaMashiach Lolomboed.